living in the right living in the right direction let's turn our bibles to proverbs chapter 28 proverbs chapter chapter 28 verse 19 proverbs chapter 28 verse 19 Is this year a good year for you? Yes. Let me just teach you something very powerful. Every time you speak about this year, speak about it in the present and in the past. Don't speak about it in the future. Just something very simple. The human mind cannot decipher between reality and what friction. So, what happens? That's why you go to a movie store, you go to a movie shop, and you're watching a movie, and you begin to cry. You know that that movie, that thing is not real. But your emotions don't know that. So as soon as they see that sad scene, it enters your emotion and you begin to cry. You begin to generate emotion that aligns with what you're watching. What does that mean? If you say, this year, I have a hundred million naira, you begin to say it. Your emotions will not be able to differentiate. Either you really have it or you don't have it. He will now generate behaviors and emotions that will align with you having it. That's why the most effective confession is not that I will, I will, I will. No, let the weak say I am strong. So when we say I was strong, I'm going to be strong. Those are not confessions of faith. The confessions of faith are in the present. He said, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. So if you are going to become rich, that's the proof that you don't get it. That's why the Bible says now faith is. Faith is always in the present. This year is a good year for me. It has been so wonderful. This year, I was marvelously blessed. I grew exponentially. There were origins. There were new things that started. New doors was open. I thought you would be talking. Praise God. I said, praise God. All right. So let's keep going now. So the Bible says in... Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19 He that tilleth his land Now watch what the Bible says He that tilleth his land So the assumption is that number one Everyone has a land Everyone has a gift Everyone has a place Now it didn't say he that has a place It says he that tilleth it So no matter the place you have There must be a cultivation He said he that tilleth his land What will happen? He says he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread that means in everybody's land there is plenty of bread now see the thing this is why a lot of people are stuck in life sometimes people ask the question i've stepped into a new year what will help me to go forward so that i'm not stagnated so that i'm not stuck the first thing is this is it he that tillet his land number one there must be something you are doing it's the year of new beginning. Listen to me. If you are going to have old results, keep doing the old things. If you are going to have new results, start doing new things. He says, he that tilled the land. So it must be very clear what your land is. It must be very clear the way you are tilling the land. The third one is this. He says, but he that followeth after vain persons shall what? Shall have poverty enough. Did you notice that? So the reason why people are stuck is this. They see what Sister Shinene is doing and they want to do what Sister Shinene is doing. They see what that person, they are so moved by what happens on the outside that they neglect what is on the inside. So when we say moving in the right direction, it's not as if people don't have direction. It's not as if people don't know what to do. But what happens is that as they are towing their parts, they get really distracted by what other people are doing. And the Bible says this, he that compares themselves with themselves are foolish. Why are they foolish? The reason why is that when you see someone doing well in something, it may be there's an opportunity in what they're doing, but it's also a combination of the person and the opportunity there. You may not have the combination to be able to unlock that particular opportunity. You may, but you may not. So, as we go into the scripture today, we begin to think about the right direction. 
success and fulfillment is direction based success and fulfillment is direction based success and fulfillment is direction based that's why direction is more important than speed it's not enough to start running direction is more important than speed so let me tell you let me give an example of why polar stock i think i said this on the end of the year service i said what happens to people is this because they don't have direction they spend one year going this way then they come back this way and say it's the wrong place then they spend another year going this way then they come back to the wrong place they spend another year going this place there's a lot of exertion and there's a lot of energy but the reason why there's no commensurate result is that there's no direction so it's almost as if they're going around the same thing over and over again so success and fulfillment is direction based and the reason i'm saying so is that success is a journey because for you to for, for for you to succeed you must consistently work at something the reason why some people are stuck is very simple they are changing too often every dream and project have an incubation process every dream and project has an internal growth process every dream and project has a stage of explosion and growth but most people are not willing to be able to stay with something they are jumping from one thing to another thing to another thing and i'm saying this to you because when you're young that's when you overestimate your strength young people please listen this is very important to you don't underestimate what can be done in the long term and don't what overestimate what can be done in short term that's the biggest mistake of people people overestimate what can be done in the short term and what underestimate what can be done in the long term and it's very key it's very powerful because sometimes we're like i want to do this in one month but the thing is that when you look at what you want to do in one month you've overpacked the month there's no way you can and sometimes you get to do it and you use three months to rest who knows what i'm talking about you get to do it and use three months to rest. But when you pace yourself, you have energy that can follow all over the period. So move in the right direction. Move in the right direction. How do you express fulfillment? Fulfillment is a function of progress. It's not, see, fulfillment is not a destination. Fulfillment is a function of progress. I take two steps forward, I experience fulfillment. So you must, and that's why no matter where you are, you must learn to enjoy the victories along the way. You must learn to enjoy the victories along the way. Life becomes exhausting when our paths are not clear. Life becomes exhausting when our paths are not clear. So when we talk about moving in the right direction, what I'm really saying is this. For you to be able to get to the place of destiny, for you to be able to get to the place that what God wants for you, there is a direction in it, and you must be willing to move in that direction. There's direction in it, and you must be willing to move in that direction. All right. Wow. Why do people lose their way? Glory to God. moving in the right direction there's a big story that i i would just say to you i've not read it to you luke chapter 15 verse 11 to 32 which is sort of the prodigal son hmm. why do people lose their way because people have things that they drive them that they are not aware of people have things that what drive them that they're not aware of that's why people lose their way so in Luke 15, there were two, there was sort of the two, but it goes on. Question, I want to ask you a question. Was it the decision of the prodigal son to lose the wealth of his father? Yes or no? Please answer. No. Watch this now. It was not his decision. But guess what? He took a path that led him to that loss. That's what he did. He took a path that led him to that loss. So why am i saying this to you i'm saying this to you that why did it go on that path Let, i want to break it down 
this is why people end up where they don't want to be, where, where they don't want to be. The prodigal son's decision was not to lose the father's wealth. This way it's position A. Position C, A eventually lost the father's wealth. Question, why did he lose the father's wealth? The reason why is that when he was here and said he didn't want to lose the father's wealth, what happened was this, was very simple. He, he took a part that will make him lose the father's wealth. There was a part that he took that made him lose the wealth. But the question is that, why did he take the part? So I'll give an example. There are people that want to grow their businesses and taking pathways that will make them lose their businesses. There are people that want to keep their marriages and taking pathways that will make what well, lose their marriages. There are people that want to make money. I, I was, I, we were discussing yesterday and someone said about a certain lady and she, she really wants to make money. And when she wants to make money, she made some money and the first thing she did was that she, she, you know, she was living on the mainland. Maybe her rent was about 500,000 naira. She moved to a brand new house in, on the island for about maybe 5 million. When she made the first money. And, you know, when she moved there, her friend is way richer than her. She, you know, she took all of the, um, all of the, like, furniture, kitchen cabinet, removed everything, spread it, like, did it like a special. Her friend said, even me that I'm richer, I will not behave like this. Question. You are saying, ah to her she thinks she's on the path to making more money you know why wisdom is too high for the fool that's why when someone would date a heartbreaker everybody sees a heartbreaker the guy is the girl is defending him is that not true everybody see the business will not work the, so question this is what i'm saying to you and this is let me tell you something why i'm saying this is that because this year this is something you want to identify why is it that i'm here this is what i want but the part i take is something that leads me there because let, let me tell you something there eh? parts are more direction and parts they are more important than goals and destination you don't get to where you want to get to you get to the path you are on you can't be on lagos ibadon expressway and get to where and get to if and get to um what if no you are somewhere else some of you, you must realize that your path is more important than your goals. Your path is more important than your goals. Uh, you must remember, remember that. Your path. What is your path? Your path talks about the daily decisions, the daily habits, the routines that you keep. Someone says, I want to lose weight. I want to lose 25 kg. That's wonderful. But every day, you go and have ice cream. Ah. Uh, the part will lead you to gain 25 kg. Is that not true? Because that's what the part is. Most of us are always so concerned with the goals, we are never concerned with the part. Someone said, this year, I want to know God more. I want to pray more. They say, fasting and prayer. I say, I can't do that one. You, the part you can't do cannot lead you there. But you can't do fasting and prayer, but you can do club fasting. Praise the Lord. These are parts. So the question is this. This is the question. The original question. Why do I want something here and do something else there? The reason why is that everyone has what I call inside drivers. What are inside drivers? Inside drivers are things that make you make decisions subconsciously. Let me tell you something there. Everybody look up here. The guide decision, the prodigal son decision was simple. I want to show that I want to show my father without his influence I can succeed. I want to show my father that by myself I'm a wise person. So he moved away from his father. See, that thing on the inside was a fear. The fear of domination by the father. That fear was what the driver was. As soon as that fear was there, the fear submerged his goal. The fear submerged his goal. So he moved into a new place. He thought he was moving towards his goal. No, he was moving in direction with his driver. And the driver was fear. The driver was fear. So let me give a practical example. Someone says, I want to start a business that will do so well. That's fantastic. But inside you, you have the fear of failure. The way you will carry out that decision is dependent on your driver. Have you not seen some ladies 
that will stay in a wrong relation. See, I know some ladies that a guy will not date, not because they are not wonderful, but because they were too easy to get. Yes or no? And the reason why the lady was easy to get is not because she doesn't want to be hard to get. Because there's an extreme hard and then there's extreme easy. But because there's fear inside that there's nobody. That driver, so the fear says there's nobody, so go for it. That in you walking with that driver, you lose what you want. Have you not seen some people that want to make money? Why do they fall for, why do they fall into the hands of dupe? Because there's a driver on the inside that makes them make such decision. What am I saying today? You need to look behind all your goal and ask what's driving me. Yeah, what's driving me? You know why? Once your driver is negative, your end will be negative. There are some of you here, what is driving you is that, let, and let me explain to you this way. And that's what you have to control. Look at, ever look, ever look, I want to receive the revelation. What, when Anna wanted a child, the first driver was this, that I can show Penina that I have a child. That was the driver. That all the people are getting married, I can show a marriage. All the people are having houses, I can show I have houses. But every time, and that was why when she didn't have it, there was bitterness. Because of what a driver is. The day she would receive a miracle, what happened? She went into the temple and the driver changed. She said, Lord, forget about Penula. Lord, forget about my husband. I've seen a need I want to partner with you. Can I become a vessel? As soon as she did that, that same year she got pregnant. I'm saying so because a lot of people, what is driving you is very negative. What is driving you is some kind of fear. What is driving you is some kind of shame. Some of you want to prove to your family member that you can succeed. So I want to prove that this and this and this. So listen, eh? every time you make a decision, you are making a decision through, through the lens of your mother, through the lens of your boss, through the lens of something. There's something you want to prove. You know? And that's why when you achieve those things, you are never fulfilled. You know why? You are actually achieving someone else's dream. That's what happens. Because by the time you achieve it, you don't have that deep sense of fulfillment because although it's your car, it's always like driving you. Although it's your life, it's, and many people are here, what you are living for is what somebody else wants for you. You have not come to a place where you can personally discern what you want for yourself. Why is that important? Until you can really discern what you want for yourself, in the day of opposition, you will not have strength to fight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at Herod. They said Jesus was born. The drive of Herod was power. As soon as he had a king was born, he didn't even find out, is he a king that will reign on earth? Or is he a king that will reign in heaven? His drive was power. Next thing, kill him. Can you see that drive? Some of you, your drive for money is so strong, you are killing things that should give you money. You are killing things that should give you life. Because there's a drive on the inside of you. You've not just paid attention. The second thing. So why do people lose their way? So the reason why people lose their way is that, so watch this now. They, they are here. They want to get there. But when this unconscious driver is in them, the driver hijacks their life and goes some other way. And unfortunately, as human beings, we don't choose what we, <laughs> human beings, we don't choose what we need to do. We choose what is familiar. Did you hear that? That's the truth. I'll give an example. If you travel abroad, you get to an airport, and you don't know what to do, you'll find a nice black person and ask for the way. Yes or no? That's it. We gravitate towards the familiar. We don't see. And unfortunately, your goals are not familiar. Because if they are familiar to you, they will not be goals. So I'll give an example. You want to make 100 million, but you're familiar with making 5 million per annum. Subconsciously, you'll be making decisions you're familiar with. That's decisions on the level of five million. Let me give an easier one. You go for a buffet table, it's here. You are the one that says you want to lose weight, oh? Yes or no? You want to lose weight. As you get there, you see salad, you see watermelon, you see cucumber. It doesn't even interest you at all. It's the things that makes you big that interest you. Why? Naturally, you don't gravitate towards what is unfamiliar. You gravitate towards familiar. And that's why people never reach their goal because the familiar cannot help you reach your goal 
because you are always gravitating see if you gravitate towards the familiar you repeat yesterday if you always gravitate and repeat the familiar you repeat yesterday for you to have new things you have to gravitate towards your familiar but the way the human mind is trained is simple how is the human mind trained the human mind is trained in such a way that to prevent you from trouble it's a help actually it's a help for your human mind he helps you choose things that are familiar Praise the Lord. How many of you have headed to Tottenham Bridge even though it was closed? I, you, you knew it was closed, but you were heading there. Uh, hands up. You see, your brain, in knew. So, I'm only saying that these people lose their way. They know I should be going this way. But because that way is a new and strange way, they find themselves heading towards failure. You will see single girls or single guys. They know if I want to get mine, this should be my behavior. This behavior. But they will keep behaving like this. And they will keep saying that God is not faithful. But the reason why is that there's something on the inside of them that is driving them that way. The way you are running your business, let me tell you something. Even if an angel sit down with you, some of you cannot prosper. And, and you know, because let me say something to you. Most of the things you need to do to prosper, you know it. Is the doing that is a problem. You know why? Because those things don't come to you naturally as a familiar pattern. So it's when you put on, it's when you come into your A level thinking, you get yourself up. But the way success works is that it's more something you do consistently. Either you feel like or you don't feel like. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. The other reason why people lose their way is a lack of focus. Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 6. Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 6. Someone say someone someone is asking, how can I achieve more this year? One of the ways you can achieve more this year is to focus and kill distractions. Yeah. Yeah. One of the ways you can achieve more this year is to focus and kill distractions. Songs of Solomon chapter one, verse six. See, see what the Bible says here. It said, Look upon look not upon me because I'm black. No, I, let, let me check. Okay, keep going. I'm, I'm trying to read my own. It's correct, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay. Yes. It's a look upon me. This is the part I'm looking for. Look not upon look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children, let's keep going, were angry with me. They made me the keep of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. What you say? It says it says other people's vineyard I've kept. He said, what? My own vineyard I've not kept. Listen to me. The reason, so I said moving towards the right direction. The reason why people lose their way is that they lose focus. And why did they lose focus? A lot of reasons. They just lose focus. Most people don't know how to stay on something because it gets boring. And when it's a new thing, it's unfamiliar for them. They lose focus. They lose focus. And let me say something to you. <laughs> Whatever you focus on grows. Do you know the power of focus? The power of focus is this. Whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you focus on produces life and energy. Question. I want to ask you a question. What do you focus on? I want to give an example. Number one, do you focus on your past or you focus on your future? Most people that most people that don't do what they like focus on the past. Should I prove it to you? Every time they respond to their wife, they respond to their wife based on the past. You did this, you did this, you did this. Why not talk to your wife based on her future? Why not talk to your wife based on the future? Every time they want to start a business, I've lost this, I've lost this, I've lost this. You see, did it? The focus listen to your conversation you will find out you are talking more about yesterday than tomorrow a lot and unfortunately once you focus on the past you repeat the past a lot of focus on the past let me tell you something the biggest story some people have is a terrible yesterday no wonder they repeat it today listen to some single girls how are you dating? Ah, pastor, dating. Hmm. 
since my last boyfriend broke up with me golf men hey see now see why they are single because they are focused and whatever you focus on does what grows you ask this businessman so how far your business uh, pastor last 2020 showed me oh i lost nothing less than 20 million see now you, you don't want that the way you are looking at the past you will repeat it again you will repeat the past if you live in the past And that's what the Bible says to us. Isaiah, he said, remember not the former thing, neither consider the things of old. He said, behold, I do a new thing. He said, now shall it spring up? Shall you not perceive it? Many people live in the past. Many of you, what is holding you is the past. They, they, you know, I, I, so you, you are held up. I lost this in the past. I, so everything is about the past. Everything is about the past. Everything is about the past. A lot of people are even judging that 2021 based on 2020. What are you focusing on? So the second thing is this. A lot of people focus on what is missing, not what is available. See, let me tell you something. Ever look up your head, lift up your head. I want to ask you a question. Why do people fail or not achieve their dreams? Let me get three reasons. Some people say capital, yes or no? Some people say capital, yes or no? Some people say connection, yes or no? Some people, what are what are that reason? What? Work? Human resource, people say human resource. I want to ask you, the people that succeeded, did they have all those problems also? What was the difference? Just one difference. You focus on what you did not have. They focus on what they had. And they became resourceful with what they have to get what they did not have. That's what it is. That's what it is. So the difference is this. There's always someone that focus on what doesn't have. Watch people that do nothing. They are always focused on what they... Why do people become stuck in life? This is the reason why. They are always focused on what they do not have. What is not missing. Someone says, ah, if I just had visa. If you see now, what do you have? Someone says, if I just knew people. What do you have? And unfortunately, once you focus on what is missing and what's available, what grows, what is missing and what is available. Listen to me. If I listen to what you say, I can tell your future. When you see people that will do well in life, that 2020 is that year, when you hear them talk, they talk as if all the resources under their control because their focus is on what they have when you see people that the year will be very chaotic for them they are always focused on what they don't have i don't have a job but do you have a skill i don't have money but do you have people what do you have why is your focus on what you don't have the law of focus whatever you focus on grows i don't have enough customer but you have some customers if you focus on these 10 customers, don't you know they can become 100? But you are focusing on what you do not have. That's how to make your marriage unhappy. Just keep focusing on what your wife does not have. Just keep focusing on what your husband does not have. As you are going with your husband, mm, see, we don't have a car. See, our friends have a car. Just keep focusing. You know why? Every time you keep focusing on what you don't have, it does something to you. You have a low self-esteem. You have a low self-esteem. And you cannot do well in life without a huge self-confidence. You talk about harvesters. Do you always focus on what we don't have or what we have? And when people always focus on what they don't have, huge self-esteem. Some people, maybe, maybe, I know about maybe five more minutes. Some people focus on what they can't control. It's not what they can't control. And in life, there are always two things. What you can control and what's what you can't control. You know what I can control? I can control meaning and interpretation. What I can't control is what you think of me. I can't. I could be on the stage right now and say, why is pastor dressing like that? Why is he not wearing a tie today? I can't control what you're thinking. But when I look at you, I can control that, wow, he's so, he's so bewowed by my dressing. That's my interpretation. But I can say to myself, ah, that is so upset. What did I do to him? It's interpretation. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought someone, was, someone meant something to you? You found out that later that it meant nothing to them? Why? Life is the interpretation you give it. 
control. Someone say, ah, he, some people, some people here, if I just leave Nigeria, ah, my life will be better. Listen to your conversation. I'm not saying don't leave Nigeria, but your focus in some, something right now you cannot control. Ah, if I can just find a man that can make me ha- ma- happy, I'll be happy. Can you listen to you, listen, little girl? Your, your heart is on something you cannot control. If I can just get more cash right now, that's something you might not be able to control. Why not focus? And listen, every time you focus on what you cannot control, your life is filled with fear because you live in an uncertainty. And and I'm saying so because these are simple things, but these are things that drive us. So I say, "Ah, once this coronavirus goes, I will start this and this. Really? So I said, I thought it would go last year. Listen to me. That's something you cannot control. What can you control? Oh, this is what I can control. Despite the coronavirus, I'm still going to achieve my goals. That's my perspective. That's what I can control. A lot. And I'm saying this. Let me tell you something. So I'm like, Pastor, I, I want a deep Bible teacher. Let me tell you something to you. The problem with us, ever look up here. The problem with theological interpretation in our country is this. The mindset is so What? That when people receive theology, they receive with a bent mindset. Have you seen people that are teaching English that have accent before? They will use the accent to pronounce the English. As in Sampion. It's not as if they don't know what they are saying. But the natural accent. What am I saying? The natural mindset affects theology. So when you tell a Christian that Christ in you is the hope of glory. When you tell a Christian that, um, what they call it, it's a new beginning. The way he will interpret it is based on the accent of the mind. What we call poverty, what we call wealth, some nations call poverty. I saw a ranking recently, and the ranking said, if you earn less than $20,000 a year, you are poor. I said, what? Less than $10 million. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. And let me say this as I, 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 I maybe I will read one more. Oh, well. so, so the question is this. What are you focusing on? Are, are you focusing? And listen, when you walk with me, that's the last thing you know. You know, you, you know about me. I, I, don't, I don't like activities. I like results. You know why? People that fail focus on activities people that succeed focus on results this year what do you focus on so you say how are you doing i've tried and tried and tried that's not what we're asking for sir deliver sir and and when you talk to people like that they think you're unfair unkind to them it's not as if we are unkind to your activities only that in this life activity means nothing result means everything the reason why is that some of you you've learned how to enjoy activity you know enjoy, you say, oh, when i spoke about next level prayer i gave you the testimonies that backed it up those are the results that's why we're still praying because there's result from the prayer you must train yourself but the question is this, if you focus on result the result grows if you focus on activity what happens the activity what grows and some people are specialists in activities Second Kings chapter eight verse ten. Preserve your focus. The the thing that distracts us the most are emotions. That's it. It's nothing distracts us more than ourselves. That's all. We are the one that you know why? Your emotions, you know, your emotions makes you in feel a way that distracts you. So most times people know what to do. Why are they not able to do it? They are distracted by their emotions. People, the worst category is entrepreneurs. They wake up one day and they're not willing to do anything about their goals. And sometimes an entrepreneur can be in a coma zone state for one month where he has done nothing significant towards his goal. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And the reason why is that his emotion has hijacked him in a way that is negative. If you are going to, listen, if you are going to go far, you must learn how to use your emotion to your control. And emotions can be changed. Emotions are emotions. For no reason you can be sad. Nothing, not that something happened. 
You just wake up in the morning, you just be sad. Have you just woken up before and felt like a failure? Nothing happened. No. See, and you know life, the way you feel is the way you interpret life. If you're going to be successful this year, you must hold your... See, your emotions are to be used by you. You should not be... Your emotions should not be using you. Your emotions should not dictate how you should feel. You should dictate to your emotions how you feel. Your emotion says you're a failure. You will tell your emotion about, shut up, I'm a success. Your emotion says you, do, you are lazy this morning. Say, shut up, I'm hard working. You know why? If you can talk to your emotion, your body will respond. So how do you feel about this here? So then, the way, see now, people are, so how do I feel? You, you, are, you are waiting for your emotions to tell you how you feel about the year. Uh-uh. I will tell my emotions how I feel about the year. It's a great year. Hey. 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 It's a great year. This year I broke all the records. Uh, you see now, some people cannot talk because their emotions have silenced them out. You know, this is everything. See, you, let me tell you something. Just a simple way. Your thought listens to your mouth. Amen? And you must learn how to say things with intensity and confidence and strength. It's a great year. It's a great year. I smashed all my goals. I broke records. My world this year so far. My most spiritual year so far. That's it. I want to ask you, all of you that said it, what happened to you right now? How did you feel? Why? Because your mouth began to affect your emotions. Did you see that? What about if you do this by yourself at home every day? If you can do this every day, just imagine on the kind of Holy Ghost energy you'll be on. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Second Kings chapter 8. Can I still go for five minutes? No, I can't. Let me just tell you the story. Read it at home. Second Kings chapter 8, verse 10. The king sent to serve and Hazai. He said, Go and ask the prophet of God if I will survive or not. So he went to ask the prophet. He says, Will my master survive? He said, Tell him he will survive, but he's going to die. <laughs> Some prophets are, are strange. He said, Tell him he will survive. That he will need that, but he's going to die. And as he was going, the prophet said, crying. He said, Why are you crying, sir? He said, because you're going to become the king after him and I've seen what you're going to do. You're going to hurt people. That's what he said, Second Kings. And as I went and told his master, he said, as I said, but I'm just a servant. He said, but God said you'll be the next king. And as I went and told the master, sir, the prophet said you, you'll be okay, just like he said. Then the next day, you know what he did? He took a towel and put it on his face and strangled him. Some like strangled him and he died. And the guy became the next king. Just through a miraculous way became the next king. Because he should not naturally be the next king. What am I saying? Prophecy has a way to provoke. If you want it to provoke you. That guy had the prophecy. You will be the next king. What happened? He walked in line with prophecy to make it happen. The question I want to say to you is this. You have had the prophecy is a new beginning. Are you going to walk in line with prophecy? Are you going to allow prophecy provoke you? Do you know what Simon said? Simon, the old Simon, when he saw Jesus Christ at birth in the book of Luke. Simon says, hey, I've seen the salvation of Israel. He said, now let my life be taken. What was he saying? He said, the reason why I was staying alive, the reason why I knew I could not die, the reason why I was staying full of hope was one reason. What was the reason? Because of prophecy. What does prophet just do? He guides you. Prophecy guides you. When the wise men were lost, what did they do? The Bible said, the prophecy said, Jesus will be born where? The prophecy gave them guidance. When we say it's a new beginning, it should give you guidance. It should provoke you. It should do something huge to your spirit. Let's pray.